Video 6, Rules of Procedure. The course negotiations in diplomatic practice is not only an exercise of public speaking skills and deepening knowledge of specific issues of international relations. The course also provides the students with an opportunity to practice rules of negotiations, usually used in official committee meetings of international organizations such as the UN. The logic behind the rules of procedure is simple. They help to maintain order and facilitate the efficient workings of the groups. They define when a delegate may speak, what he or she may address, how to address it, or what the voting system is. Therefore, it is extremely important for each delegate to develop a thorough knowledge of the rules. As there is no standard template for the rules of procedure and each negotiations are different, the course negotiations in diplomatic practice allow students to develop their own rules of procedure. This material should have a written form available for every delegate and should serve as a customized set of comprehensive guidelines for negotiation proceedings. Now, let's present you a simplified version of the rules and the flow of the session that could actually be used in simulated negotiations. The first order of business in a model session is a roll call, during which the chairperson reads aloud the names of each member state in the negotiations. When a delegate's country name is called, he or she may respond, present, or present and voting. A delegate responding present and voting may not abstain on a substantive vote. After roll call, the group can vote on agenda and decide which of the assigned topics to discuss first. Delegates can vote in favor of proposal, against proposal, or abstain from voting. Speaking of voting, there are two main types of votes. The first one is procedural vote, when only yes or no are options and abstentions are not allowed. The second one is vote on substantive matters having to do with the topic being discussed, on a resolution for example. In this case, states may vote yes, no, or abstain. The voting methods can be different for each type of voting. For example, it's possible to use simple majority for procedural voting but require unanimous vote of all parties in substantive matters. On the top of that, decisions can be adopted also without a vote, in another words, by consensus. In this case, delegations negotiate until they agree on an acceptable solution for all parties. After the agenda and initial topic is selected, the committee is ready to begin debate. Generally, there are three debate formats. The default debate format is formal debate, or sometimes called the speaker's list. This is where delegates take turns making speeches by the order that they are listed on the speaker's list, as selected by the chair. Speeches are typically around one minute or one minute and 30 seconds, but the speaking time can be changed by a vote from the delegates. After a certain number of speeches, the delegates may vote to change up the debate format to caucus. This is a temporary break in formal debate in which countries can more easily and informally discuss a topic. There are two types, moderated caucus and unmoderated caucus. Moderated caucus is a mix of both formal and informal debate, when anyone may speak for a short period of time if they raise their placard and are called on by the chair. This debate format enables a freer exchange of opinions than would be possible in formal debate. The second type of caucus is an unmoderated caucus, when delegates are free to get up and roam around the room to mingle and speak freely. This enables the free sharing of ideas to an extent not possible in formal debate or even a moderated caucus. Session will switch between formal debate, moderated caucus, and unmoderated caucus until draft resolutions are complete, merged, and ready to be presented.